Hi. I bet you're thinking, what on earth have you got now by to fix it? Right, uh, a former friend of mine, um, one of his friends found this in one of his fields. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a weather balloon. There's about two or three launches uh, a day at different locations in the UK. So I think there's about ten of these, or five or ten of these launched every day in the UK. Um, what I'm interested in here is the electronic part, which is this here. Uh, this is the remains of the uh, balloon, which is uh, rather disgusting and covered in God knows what. So uh, I think we'll get rid of this shortly. And this part here is the uh, parachute, which helps it float back down to earth so it doesn't uh, drop on anybody's head. So what I think I'll do, I'll get rid of this lot and clean my bench up a little bit. And then we'll uh, we'll have a look at this. We'll take it apart and uh, see what makes it tick. Right, that's a bit better. Now these things have got a, a GPS uh, receiver in, and also a transmitter. That's the antenna there for the uh, the transmitter. It's also got a humidity sensor and a temperature sensor in the top here as well. Um, now this particular unit. Because each unit has its own serial number. And there's a site called radiosondi.info. And that one will actually show you all the balloons that are currently flying around the world. And if you've got a serial number of one of these, which we have here, you can type it in and it'll give you some info about it. Now, this particular one was launched on the 22nd of December. Uh, 2022 and it was launched from a place called Casta Bay in Ireland which is near Belfast and it's about 140 miles away from uh, where my friend found it um, apparently the maximum speed of this one was 165 kilometers an hour and it went just over 25 kilometers high so that's pretty high and the temperature where it was when it was up there was uh, minus 71.3 centigrade. That was the um, the maximum or the minimum recorded temperature, should I say. Or minus 96 Fahrenheit. So yeah, pretty cold. That's probably why it's covered in um, polystyrene for insulation and also for when it comes down. Uh, it doesn't actually cause any damage if it lands on uh, somebody's head or whatever. I mean, like you say, it has got a parachute on it, so, you know, but I suppose if the uh, parachute got tangled or whatever, but, uh, yeah. So anyway, if we try and switch the unit on, yeah, so there's a tiny little flicker on the LEDs there, so I think the uh, batteries have uh, died on it. So, yeah, so I think the next thing is to figure out how we actually get into it. Um... That doesn't look any obvious signs. I mean, it looks like it's uh, being held at the bottom there. Where we've got this sort of clip thing. I'll just get a little screwdriver. And we'll try poking this with uh, the screwdriver. See if we can get into it. Oh. Right, that's one uh, clip out. And it looks like we might have to do the same up here with this one. I try two screwdrivers. And we're in. Right, let's zoom down a little bit. Right, so we've got a couple of Energizer Lithium batteries in there. Does this board come out? Yes. Right, we'll get this case out of the way. Um, that's the uh, temperature and humidity sensor. I might get under the microscope later on, so we're going to have a, a quick look at that. Uh, what have we got on the back? Let's, uh, let's zoom down a little bit more. Right, looks like we've got a, a U-Blocks 
and see that would be the GPS receiver and that looks like a GPS antenna there maybe get but might be better getting this under the uh, the microscope maybe to see it a bit more clearly but we'll just have a quick look over it first let's just zoom back out of touch uh, I think we'll pull these batteries out first and it looks like we've got a an ST processor under there or microcontroller uh, looks like something 100 there 32F100 right and that's obviously the power switch right tell you what, I think we'll pop some batteries in and see if it uh, does anything let's get some uh, fresh batteries here Try the power button. Oh, we've got a we've got a green light and now a red flashing one. It looks like uh, maybe we've got a bit corrosion on this sensor here. Like I say, I think it's been uh, laid in a field for quite some time, at least a you know a few months. And anyway, um, so when was this launched? December. Yeah, so it's probably been lying in a field for a couple of months. So, yeah, it's probably a little bit worse away, but the circuit board seems functional. Like I said, the uh, LED there is flashing away, so... Um, I wonder if it's actually transmitting. I'll tell you what, I'll switch it off a second. I'll zoom out a sec. Right, so I've just been to get my... Uh, Bio Feng, I think that's how you pronounce it, but it's probably wrong. Um, which is a, a little ham radio here, and oh, wrong way. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, program in the frequency of what this should be transmitting on. So, from Radio Sunday dot info, this was support. This unit here was set to transmit on four zero three nine hundred. So we'll try uh, four zero. So that's that uh, unit here transmitting data, and that's what we're hearing on the uh, the radio. So it's uh, it's actually transmitting still. Let's switch that off. Let me see it uh, stopped. I'm gonna switch it back on again. So we know the transmitter part's actually working on this. Now one thing I did build a while back was a, a tracker for one of these because like I said um, you've pretty much got a little STM development board here with the GPS module that you can actually repurpose for uh, other things instead of it being just a, a weather sounder. Um, so what I made a while back or built was uh, one of these uh, which is a little uh, receiver board. Now there's some open source firmware you can put on this called uh, Radio Sunday and people uh, had kind of chase these and then go and collect them because the the, the disposable, you know, the uh, the meteorological uh, places that launch these or the uh, the weather places uh, don't want them back they're just basically uh, disposable, they're like a one time use only so I suppose it helps clean up the environment as well and you get a free uh, development board. Uh, right, so what I'll do is I'll switch this on. And it should come up on the screen there. Um, and I'll just uh, fire up my phone as well because I've got an app that goes on your phone. And hopefully if we switch this on where it says here it should pick up um, and there we go so it's picked up the serial number there 1050522 now if we get the um, 
Oh, here we go. And there's its serial number. I'll just zoom down a little bit so you can see that. Yeah, it's a little bit flickery on the camera, but it's not like that in real life. It's just uh, obviously the thing there. Uh, and obviously it hasn't got any GPS position, so it's just putting more uh, in a completely random location there. So yeah, so if I put this outside, it should actually get a GPS signal and transmit it back to here and show us on the uh, phone, on the map, where it is and then you can, you know, go and try and locate it and recover it. That's the uh, the idea behind it. Right then. Let's uh, get this out of the way. So I'm going to disconnect the sensor. It's just a little connector here. So we'll get that out of the way. I'll get that out of the way as well. And I think I'll bring the microscope in so we can get a, a better look at the board. And I'll pull the batteries out as well. Uh, and I think this battery holder comes off. There we go. Right. I shall bring the microscope in and we'll have a look. Right, so this is the uh, humidity sensor. Now, I don't know which parts of it are which, but apparently there's a heater in here, so the um, so it stays at a constant temperature. Now, I don't know whether that bottom part is the heater, um, and this part might be the humidity sensor. I'm not 100%. I don't know what this part is here. This uh, oblong thing, I mean, that could be well be the uh, humid humidity sensor. And that could be the heater, perhaps, I don't know. That's a, a close-up view of it there. Uh, the temperature part is apparently handled by a platinum resistor. Which I've got a feeling that that's going to be this thing here. So, yeah, you even get a free bit of platinum with one of these. Right, I'll get this out of the way and we'll have a look at the board. Let's have it refocus things in a bit. Right, so that is the GPS chip. Uh, I'm not sure what those smaller chips are there. Well, they're obviously something to do with the uh, the antenna side of things. That's the GPS antenna there, that uh, little small silver thing in the centre of the screen there. Uh, what else have we got on here? Looks like some kind of voltage regulator there. And there's another one down here. Uh, I'm not sure what that IC is. We'll probably have to look that one up. Um, looks like it could be a, a logic chip perhaps. I'm not 100%. I'll have to have a look up the number on that one. Actually TX. No, no, I'm not sure. Not sure on that one. There's a couple of uh, other small components around there. I'm not too sure what those are. Or that I see there. YC751. I'm not sure we'll be to uh, bring the data sheet up on that. Right, what have we got over here? There's not much really on the back of the board here. Uh, just spin that round to try and get the number. SI4032, that must be the uh, the transmitter. Yeah, that must be the transmitter chip. Yeah, it is because that goes off to the antenna, which is just soldered on there. Yeah, so that's the, uh, the transmitter. Right, let's see what we've got on the other side. I don't think there's really a lot on here apart from the uh, the main processor. 
which is the uh, 32F100 made by ST with the 24 megahertz crystal looks like there's another small IC here uh, I'm not too sure what that one is either it looks like it's something to do with power so it's probably some kind of power supply there because it's got a, uh, a capacitor and a, an inductor there and a couple of capacitors there so I'd say that's some kind of power management I see as well and it looks like we've got a couple of more voltage regulators down there and that looks pretty much it now one thing that I did notice is uh, I'll have to zoom out a little bit maybe but there's a big coil around the base here you can probably just see that might be a bit out of focus but there and that looks like an RFID coil so there must be some kind of um, I don't know RFID thing when uh, perhaps these are being configured or loaded up or whatever uh, I might have a little bit more investigation into that and at the bottom here there's a, a connector which uh, you can use for either I think it's um, I think it's for adding extra sensors on or possibly being used for programming as well yeah, there's like a, a header connector there you can see right okay I'll do a little bit of investigation and then I'll be back so I've just had the uh, unit outside just to uh, see if it would pick up a GPS signal and as you can see there I'll have to blur some of these digits out uh, <laughs> it's uh, picked up the uh, the coordinates of currently where it's at so the uh, GPS receiver is working uh, still as well on this so right I think I'm gonna have a play with this uh, connector here see if we can get any uh, signals or anything out of there this connector here so i think i'll hook that up to the laptop and uh, be back shortly right so i've got it connected to the laptop via this ttl to usb converter uh, and that's wired onto the serial well the uh, interface port here which has got the uh, serial connections on so We'll uh, switch over to the laptop screen. Right, so we'll uh, switch the device on and see what it does. And what we can see now is um, Vi Sala RS41 radio Sunday software. Uh, and there's the unit serial number, what frequency it's set on and it's transmitting power which is three out of seven and transmitting is enabled now i did a quick search on the internet and there's a service menu password because if you type anything currently it won't uh, actually do anything but if you type capital s capital t w s v and hit enter we get presented with a bit of a nice menu here now on this one the uh, red lights flashing and that usually indicates an error from what it says on the front of it so R should give with red light info which should tell what the error is and that says PTU failure uh, and self check failure now what PT stands for is a platinum thermistor I think it is which is the uh, the temperature sensor so perhaps the temperature sensor has been damaged um, when it's uh, you know either sat for two months or when it uh, came down so it looks like the temperature sensor is faulty on this um, I think there's a way we can actually view the um, view the sensors somewhere uh, S sensors there we go yeah, and if we look at T, it says minus 252. And I don't think it's minus 252, otherwise it'd be rather cold in here. So, yeah. Um, RH, relative humidity, I guess, which is saying 58. 
Um, what else can we do in here? Board rate. Uh, TX frequency. So if we press F, it should allow it to change the uh, the frequency, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, what else have we got? Parameters. What does that do? I'm not sure on that one. Um, TX random, TX continuous, serial number, aye, aye, so it looks like you'll be to change the serial number. Uh, I don't know what launch and drop does, but yeah, I just thought uh, that was a little bit of interest as well, you know, how you can actually hook it up to a, um, a serial port and get into the debug menu to see exactly what's going on with it. So this is the uh, radiosunday.info site that I was talking about and this is actually what's happening at this present moment. Uh, so we can see some balloons around about the UK. There's quite a few of them over Europe here we can see that they're currently uh, flying about. Um, I'll just go over here. That's the launch site of the one that uh, I've currently got here. And if we zoom in, we should actually be able to see this one moving. Oh, so it's been doing a bit of a, a bit of a wiggle there. There you can see it. Uh, so this is actually updating in real time from its GPS coordinates that it's actually transmitting. So if we just give it a second, you should see that. Uh, you should see that move. I think it updates about every 15 seconds or so. Let's just zoom in a bit more. There we go. Yeah, so it just moved from there to there. So, so yeah, all this is uh, live data. So if you're interested in obtaining one for yourself, you could uh, look on this site. And if you actually click on this, um, it'll give you the um, what frequency it's transmitting on its serial number, uh, its current altitude and if you click on this icon here uh, where it says on the serial number it should take you to a new page here uh, and that's going to be its predicted where it's burst because this is the launch, this is where it, the balloon bursts and starts coming down and that's its uh, predicted landing area so it looks like this one will be lost in the sea. And also you can get historical data from uh, any units that were launched. Uh, like I said, this is the actual unit that I've got here. Um, serial number U1050522. And that's where it was launched. And that's roughly where it was found. Um, there should be a bit more data about it here at the bottom. There's all the uh, temperature and pressure readings, its altitude, speed, um, GPS coordinates and the time. Um, and somewhere on here you should be able to see uh, its maximum height as well. Uh, let's scroll down there. There we go. Yeah, so... 25182 so 25 kilometers and minus 71.3 C what can we do with it then well you can actually reprogram it to do a few different things I mean you could make a I don't know a, a GPS tracker out of it that uh, would transmit because it's got quite a um, quite a large range on it um, you could make your own weather balloon out of it. I don't know. Sort of. Uh, I think some people have used them as sort of like ham transmitter, sort of radio type things as well. So I don't know. It's, uh, I just thought it was quite a little interesting device, and it's the first time I've came across one. I did go searching for one once with the uh, the thing that I built here. Um, I'll put a link uh, to. Um, to this if anybody's interested in making one of them I'll put that in the video description as well um, so if you want to go uh, radio Sunday hunting one day yeah you could uh, build one of these connect it to your phone and uh, away you go in the car <laughs> 
I know it wasn't a repair video, but you might have found it interesting in any way. So, right then. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.